Well, I've said it. I don't understand why you think the words in note in your book you can memorize, but not other words in another book. What the reason still words. The reason. The reason is is two things, right? Number one, that we believe the Quran is the word of God, right? And the Quran, God says that He made this book easy for memorization. So there is a claim here. The second reason is that we see the reality of this happening. We see blind children, blind children, right? Seven years old, they memorize the entire book, blind. So they cannot even look at the book and read. They've learned it, they've heard it, they've been taught. Definitely, definitely. It's not about how they learn it. It's about the fact that they learn. And it's not even the language. So you're saying the same seven-year-old couldn't be taught to memorize another book? I would say it's, it's not, it's not going to be possible. If you try to teach in the conditions that I give, right? Asian language, 6,000 verses, yeah. right? For 6,000 verses, yeah, above 6,000 verses. And when you recite, he recites perfectly, like the language of the people, of the language itself. If you read wrongly, he will correct you. He will tell you, no, you made a mistake here, you made a mistake yeah, so there. If he, knows, if he knows the book, he can correct you, yeah. Sure. Yeah. So if you, I'm now making a claim that you can. You're making a claim that you can. So if you make a claim that you can, you, you might can, right? You might, it, might, it might happen, but it will be an extraordinary thing, right? It will not be the regular. It's, it's not impossible, but it's highly improbable. Exactly. Yeah, so I'm saying it will, be, it will not be the general case. So it's, it's possible, but highly improbable. You'll be happy with that, right? I, uh, the problem I've got is I don't understand why every other book in the world is highly improbable, but the Quran or whatever. Because the fact that we see today people, children, everywhere around the world, millions, memorizing the Quran. Is there, is there, so we see the reality. That is the reason we say is that. Is there another culture that has that tradition to memorize a book? I, I don't know personally, but if there is, I'm sure they could memorize they could be. their book. They I, don't could know, be. I don't see why they couldn't memorize their book at six years old. If that was their tradition from birth all the way back hundreds of years or whatever. I don't understand why memorizing the Quran is special. It's just your done thing. I never said that. I said what is special that the fact that they do, right? And if you don't believe that millions right oh, if you believe if you believe, I mean if you believe do. I believe no 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 I mean if you believe that millions can memorize any book, right, around the world, show me evidence of that happening, right? A lot of people try to teach their children to memorize other books, try to teach them to memorize the Bible. Some people today, and you can see that not even children, old people, they try to memorize the entire Bible, but they can't. They get confused, right? The language of the Bible itself does not allow you. The Quran has a miraculous nature as well of recitation, right? It has a, some sort of a rhythm that allows you also to memorize, right? So we're not making a claim that it's impossible for a child to memorize another book. But we're saying it's very difficult and highly probable for it to happen. So if you see a phenomena of millions of people doing it, does not say. So can I finish the statement that I'm saying? About memorizing it. Sure. Not saying the Quran here that um um you take one step to Allah, and Allah takes two. So no, that's in the Hadith, not in the Quran. It's in the Hadith. Yes. In the Hadith. Yes. Is it okay? But it's the same thing. You're saying the same thing, right? You you take one step. And Allah takes two, you take two, Allah takes four. Is that correct? No. Not exactly like that. Not exactly like that, but the meaning is similar to what you're saying. Didn't you say something about if you start memorizing that ayat? The meaning is similar. you memorize the ayat, you memorize one, Allah will give you the next one. No. Did not say that? No. In the, in, in, no. no? The Quran says that the Quran is, Allah made it easy for memorization, which is clear. Wala al Yeah. Where, where, in surah, in surah Hijra, I think. Hijra. Hij chapter 15. Is it you think or is that right? Chapter 15. So Most likely. Al you can research it. Al Hijra. Al Hijra, yeah. Chapter 15. You'll probably find it there. So, I don't know if we agree or disagree so far. Do we agree it's highly unlikely for. It's hmm. the same probability for. Not any book, obviously. War and peace. And, you know, some books are harder than others. But to memorize. What makes things harder? That's the question. Uh, length, highlighting. Length. Density, um, the complexity, but what I'm saying is, I don't understand why what sets the, the Quran apart that is special to be memorized, where e any other books can add in a little bit here. Highly yeah. What is easy to memorize, prose or poetry? Uh, I wouldn't know. I, I haven't memorized anything myself, so I wouldn't know. I wouldn't poetry, know. because it has certain rhymes and meters, right? You can memorize it like this, it's easy. That's why children, when they memorize, 
the children, um, what are they called, at very early age, when they memorize, um, they're not called poems, they're called poetry. No, children like at early age, it makes them memorize something. Matthew Ewing? Twinkle, 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 little star. Or, you know, nursery rhymes. What are, they, what are they? Like nursery rhymes. Nursery rhymes. Yeah. Why do we call them rhymes? Because because they rhyme until they're able to use yeah, them. Yeah, If you ask them to memorize a text written by a scientific professor on a particular, you know, in cosmology, and ask them to memorize it, you know, they will, but it will be harder than a one which is a rhyme. Yeah, so they could memorize it, uh, perhaps not understand it. But it will be difficult. In terms of complexity the, the and difficulty, of saying the, words, the difficulty of memorizing rhyme, meters and mean. prose is different. Quran is not prose or is not poetry. Yeah. It has a unique genre. And yet, people are able to memorize it. Other people, even though they try because of their religious connection, to memorize the Bible, the New Testament and Old Testament, they're not able to um, memorize as much as they want to. Okay? How many in your lifetime that you have met that have memorized the whole of the Greek New Testament? It doesn't matter to it doesn't matter to children, adults. Um, I don't, me personally, I don't know many. This is something that you can do. Do some research through the libraries, academic institutions, or even internet on your phone, on your on your computer. How many, what's the number of people have memorized the entire Greek New Testament in Greek? Doesn't matter whether they're professors of Greek language or a child or an adult. How many of them? If they're not many in number, why is it difficult? One question. Well, secondly, is it because they don't consider it's important or is it because which one they should memorize? Because they haven't got a particular one which they think is the, is the one unique one. Have they had the same Brother, tradition of more. memorizing it? They hmm? may not put the same Zero importance 15. on memorizing Zero it we from money to me. all the way back. Do you know uh, why we I consider it really important? important? Because memorization of the text will preserve the text in your heart. You can change it on paper. 54, you can transform 22. it differently on a different transcription. But when you have preserved in your heart to heart by mass community of people, and they transmit from generation to generation, you will not be able to change it. So you can destroy whole of the Quran in printed media, in CDs, in DVDs. Chapter 54, in any of verse this, 22. You know, digital media, whatever you are. Yeah. All of them. You can bring the Quran back from a six year old the next moment you want to do that. Yeah, Why? Because that's how the preservation of the Quran is. So my brother's point here is the Quran has a unique special feature of its divine authenticity in which God made it easy to remember so that it can be preserved also Surely that's from subjective. generation to generation. It's How is it subjective? It's easy. It's easy. When you say so, subjective, if it wasn't objective, then you would say only some people can memorize it. When, so you think every person who's tried to memorize it has memorized okay. it? They can just read it think off. of a number. Or do you think somebody has okay. tried and gone, let me, I can't do this? Let me, ask you, let me ask you to reflect. How many people do you think are right now have memorized the Quran on planet Earth? Give me a rough estimate. Uh, I don't know. I don't. Give me how many Muslims in the world? One quarter of the popula world population or more. Uh, I'd probably say, I guess, it, a quarter of them, maybe. Right. Ten percent of them. So, so ten percent of them. That's a large number who memorized it. So isn't that showing something that's actually easy to remember? Otherwise you'd well, find no. maybe 100, 200, 1000. If it was that easy, why does the other 90% not? If it was easy. Maybe the other 90% are not making that effort. Yeah, maybe. We don't know. They could be making well, the effort. We know they're not making that effort. No, we don't know that. We, we do. We do. We do. Okay, could, fine. Maybe, maybe. It could you know, be. in London, there are several, several mosques around. Yeah. And we can go to a mosque in Maghrib time or Aisha time. These are sunset after sunset. Or just a little bit later, in the early morning, early part of the night. The Quran is recited aloud. You'll find people listening to it. You can ask a certain number of people in the congregation. Have you memorized the Quran? They say all of it. If they say no, ask them why not. You'll get your answer straight away. So it's not that they're collect. I tried and tried for you know 30 so years. Do you, do you know of any people? who've tried and failed. Who tried and failed. Okay, can uh, you... Personally, no. Can you observe first, how did they try? Okay, uh, I can... I don't know how you told it. Okay, so I, I, I can open a book, right? Read the book once. Then I say, I tried to memorize the book, but I couldn't. Is this really so, trying? 
right? All right, so, so do you know any people who've gone through the correct procedures? Okay. Read it, however many times you have to. I want to make, it from I make a few points. And it will not stick in their sure, head. Sure, sure. I want to make a few points. First point is every Muslim must memorize a part of the Quran. Like, for example, chapter one, other verses to recite when they pray. Right? So every Muslim memorizes a part of the Quran. That is a fact, right? They cannot pray otherwise. Or except if they're new Muslim. Except if they're a new Muslim, right? Uh, then they start to memorize, right? So take the time to memorize. But every Muslim, in order for you to pray, you must memorize a part of the Quran. So what is unique about the Quran? Not just the fact that they memorize. What you're, what you're thinking about in your mind, that you're reading a book in your language. I'm telling you, pick a book in a language that you don't understand, right? So when you don't understand something and you're saying, it's easy to memorize something that you understand. Because, right, you understand what you're saying. But if you don't understand what you're saying, it's much, much, much harder, right? So I'm giving you an example of a book in one of the hardest languages of the world, right, which is Arabic, in the Asian form of it, and it's being memorized. I'm not just giving you any, any language that is your language, that is easy, that... You understand what I'm trying to say? That's what makes it miraculous in a sense, right? So there is a claim in the Quran. What I'm trying to say is that there is a claim in the Quran, right? That the book is easy to memorize. This claim is proven in the physical reality. We can see this claim in the physical reality. And that gives us credibility for the Quran, right? Because it's not just a claim here or there. When he makes a claim, you see it. Yeah, you want to say no, something? No, go, go, go. Just, yeah. just, when he makes a claim, we see it on the physical reality, right? So that gives it credibility. I, I, I'm not sure if I agree with that because if we go by, say, I, I don't know, say if we go by that 10% that I said, I don't know if that's true or not. If it was easy, which means easy, it's not, it's not, oh, you can do it if you really try, it's easy. Why are the other 90% or even, all right, some people won't try, I'll give you that, some people probably don't care about it as much. Why is it not a bigger number then? Why does not say 8 out of every 10 Muslims know it off by hand? Is, it's easy. Is 10% a small number? Out of 100. Especially yeah. if you look at the population of Muslims. Out of, out of, no, the 10% was out of the population of Muslims. Sorry? So that 10% is 10% of the population of Muslims. Yes, population. I know. Yeah. So, so I'm telling I you, say that is, a small is that a small number? Yes. Millions is a small number. In terms of the entire population, yes, 10% of 100% is okay. a small number. The rest of the people, right? What we know as Muslims is the Quran is not obligatory to memorize, right? So they might not memorize because they don't want to memorize. The person who wants to memorize is the person who wants, he believes this is the words of Allah, yeah? yeah. So he holds this in high esteem. So he wants to memorize it because of that, right? So the fact that many people are not memorized because it's not obligatory for you to memorize anyways in the first place. But what I'm saying, if it's easy, so, if it's easy. Even if it's easy. No, if it's easy, why, why is it not? 99 of 10 Muslims know no, if it's easy to memorize. 99% yes. of Muslims memorize it if it's obligatory to do so. If it's not obligatory to do so, the question should be, why would they memorize it? Not why wouldn't they memorize it? The default position is that you don't memorize. So you need a reason to memorize. So you got it mixed the other way, right? So if I want to memorize something, I must have a reason to memorize it. So as long as it's not obligatory in Islam to memorize the Quran, the people who do it, they do it out of voluntarily act because they hold it in high esteem more than the other people, right? That's why we have this population of 10% of Muslims memorizing. But this 10%, different ages, different languages, different places, proves that there is something about the Quran. It's not just an ordinary book that you memorize, what right? Are the, what are the special features of the Quran that you like to share? So one, this is yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe try to move on to something else. Yeah, yeah definitely, <laughs> definitely. What, what we would like to come to is the existence of God, right? Because you said that you're 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 uh, agnostic, right? This is how you. Try to tell you a question I do have about not particularly to your religion, just the idea of a creator. Sure. Is this creator has created absolutely everything, small atoms, furthest galaxies, all the rest of it, everything inside it. I don't know, I can't make the leap of why he cares about very um, minor details in religion, say circumcision, the way you pray, the amount of times you do it a day. Mm. I just think these things would be very, very minuscule things to such a grand creator of mm. everything. Mm. These very, very small details could, could I don't know what it's like in your religion, could decide if you burn in hell forever mm. or Okay. Go to heaven. Good question. I'm not saying murder, like, doesn't care for murder. I'm saying if you pray four times instead of five, or you, do, you pray at the wrong time, okay. or you're not circumcised. I don't understand why something that grand would sure. care about 
such sure. small issues. Sure. So, so there's is, there is two reasons, right? First reason is this, so I want to ask you. If there is a person who is a manufacturer, right, or a creator of something, right, and he creates something, right, that you don't know how that something works. So he writes a manual where he gives you every specific detail of how that thing functions, right? And we have another manufacturer who made something and he just told you one, one or two things about that thing that he made. Which one is a better manufacturer or a creator? But the, no, I don't mean how to live your life. I never spoken about how, I'm just giving a hypothetical example right now, right? Some, yeah, two that. people who made something, yeah. you don't know how to operate that something, but one told you every specific detail of how you operate it, and another person who told you one or two things and he left you to deal with it. But that, no, Which one is a better, it's a simple question. Yeah, but it's the wrong, Which one? The wrong, I don't know if I've asked the question right, but it's not a point. It's not, he's telling I'll tell you how it works. links to the point, it's if you answer good. the question. <laughs> well, obviously, if you give more detail of how something works, that's, that's better. But he's not, okay. I'm not, the question I'm asking is not what he's telling us how the world works. What I'm saying is, why does he care, for example? Sure. Good. Why, if, if you allow me to finish, skin, you'll understand, you'll understand that I was not talking about the world, right? I was talking about the functions of human beings. I was talking about what is good, what is bad for human beings. Human beings, by nature, they require guidance. That's why we have laws. That's why we have our parents teaching us things when we were young. We require guidance, right? God giving us specific guidance proves how great He is, not the opposite, right? So Allah giving us details of what is good to us, what is bad for us. Circumcision is good for you, that's why Allah made it, told you to do it, right? Drinking alcohol is bad for you, that's why Allah forbade you from doing it. Eating pork is bad for you, sorry? A lot of things are bad for people. Show me one thing which is bad, right? That Islam tells you, tells you to do. It tells you can do. Yeah. Not, not can do. It tells you, you, tell you to do. It orders you to do. Uh, but orders you to do or allows you to do. Look, you can do anything bad out of your own will, right? I'm asking you in the system, Islamic system, what does the Islamic system order you to do which is bad for you? I don't, I wouldn't know. I don't know the... Uh, yeah. So here, if you don't know, obviously we don't find anything, right? If we don't find anything that proves the Islamic system, to an extent, I'll tell you research and find something. But the Islamic system is perfect. It's perfect. It doesn't have anything bad, right? So if Islam tells you things which are good for you, why is the problem in that? That makes Allah a greater creator, right? It makes him the greatest as we call him, right? Because he gave you every specific detail. If he did not give you every specific detail and you started to do something which is harming yourself, right? That proved the manufacturer left you without guidance. Well, uh, I don't know why I'm just thinking at this point. Why, what is it about circumcision that's worth, bad for you if you don't have it, or good for you if you do have it? Sure. Because he created us with one. Sorry? He, he designed us with a, with a foreskin and then demands us to cut it off. That's what sure. I understand. Sure. Like little things like that. Sure. Not, when, not what's good or bad when, for health, okay. don't, sure. don't take drugs, I get those things. But sure. little details like I'm designing you with something, then you immediately have to cut it off, and if you don't, I'm going to be very mad at you. Like, you, you know. no, nothing in Islam says that, though. <laughs> nothing in Islam says if you don't, I'll be very mad at you. And in fact, in the schools of thought, there's difference of opinion whether it's obligatory or not, right? So, this is what you should look at too, right? Is it obligatory, is it not obligatory in Islam to begin with, right? But the reason, the main reason is what, look? If the Quran is truly coming from Allah, right? It's coming from God, it's coming from the Creator. The Creator, by definition, knows its creation. Do we agree? Whatever Creator created something knows its creation, right? So when the Creator, the one that has infinite wisdom and infinite knowledge, do you have infinite wisdom and infinite knowledge, right? You don't, we don't have infinite wisdom and infinite knowledge. So when Allah tells us something, we do it because we know it's good for us, because it's coming from the one who has infinite wisdom, infinite knowledge. The reason that we do it is many reasons. One of them is worship. Following the command of the Creator is worship to the Creator, right? The second one is because it's good for you. Definitely good for you because it's coming from the all wise, right? So you're worshiping him, you're being obedient and you're surrendering yourself when you follow the commandments of the Creator, right? So God is giving you commandments to do. If Allah made everything simple for you, you don't have to do anything. What's the point of creating you in the first place? There will be things that you have to do, right? As a form of obedience, as a form of connecting with the Creator, as a form of being spiritually fulfilled, right? So is that, is, is that the problem, your problem with the Creator? Uh, my problem with that, the idea of the creator and those small rules 
uh, that I need to put in is if I... I Can I just add it, something to it? Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you were basically saying, why would small, very minor issues yeah. would lead people to eternal damnation and suffering in hellfire? But that's not what we say that would be in everlasting hellfire. If there are people who are violating certain commands of God, uh, you need to understand what, what commands this came under in which category. Were they totally absolutely forbidden? Where they were simply saying, okay, you know, you shouldn't do it as a like a dislike. The levels of categories are absolutely mandatory to absolutely forbidden, and in between there are dislike, and recommended, and permissible. There are five categories. The legislation from God comes under five categories. One end is absolutely obligatory for everyone to do. Man mandated, mandatory. The other extreme is totally forbidden. You have to abstain from doing that. In the middle is which is called permissible. It doesn't matter whether you do or not do it. And in between, there's one which is recommended and other is which is disliked. So, if it's something like, for example, if someone couldn't do circumcision for medical reasons or is scared or whatever, it's not going to put them in hellfire for eternity. What puts people in hellfire for eternity are the major crimes that God has told us about associating partner with God. If you did not repent from it and ask forgiveness from it and you died on that state, this is a sin that God doesn't forgive. But other crimes against God, God 